Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing a new powder foundation that I picked up recently and I'm loving so far. Um, so I was on a quest for a powder foundation um, just to kind of use on my days off from work, days that I was just running errands. I didn't really want to, you know, bust out a liquid foundation and have all of that on my skin. Um, the only powder foundations that I've used have always, have always been pressed foundations. So Studio Fix was my, the first foundation I've ever worn, actually, when I was in high school. That was what I started with, um, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. It's by MAC. It's um, just a pressed powder foundation. It's awesome. It's a good, good foundation. Um, and then I used the Estee Lauder Double Wear, and then I used a Chanel um, pressed powder foundation, and those were all great, but I wanted a loose powder because I wanted something that looked a little bit more natural. Those powder foundations, uh, just on me, look very matte. They give great coverage, but they're very matte. So I wanted something that had a little bit more of a sheen that looked more like skin. I had used the Bare Minerals in the past, which is a loose uh, powder foundation, and it was pretty, but I started to to feel like it just kind of looked oily on me throughout the day so I um, I wanted something that was in between I didn't want something that was really had a high sheen I didn't want something that was heavy and matte either I wanted something right in between that was easy that gave decent coverage and that just looked like natural skin so I picked up the Tarte Amazonian clay foundation a few weeks ago and I actually ended up taking it back to Sephora like three times um, because I kept getting the wrong shade those foundations run really really pink so I um, I think I got like medium beige the first time Time and that was too pink and then I got like natural beige or something anyway once I finally got the foundation shade that was right on me I just decided I was not a fan of that foundation and that's okay um, and I've heard great things about it and actually a friend of mine who's a makeup artist who does beautiful makeup recommended it and so I kept trying to like love it and I just just didn't work for me so I took it back and I was talking to the girl at Sephora and she recommended that I try the Smashbox Halo Hydrating Perfecting Powder, which um, comes in a box like this. So I picked this up. Now I'm going to tell you my experience with Smashbox. I have a few Smashbox products. Um, a few things that I have loved from theirs are they're like I think they're they're called the Always Sharp Eye Pencils. But any of their shadow palettes that I've ever purchased, I have been extremely disappointed in. So I think because of that reason, I've always never really spent any time at the Smashbox counter or display. Um, it's just not a brand that I gravitate to and I think it's because I've tried like three or four of their shadow palettes and they're always disappointing. And I told that to her. I was like, well, are you sure Smashbox, Smash, bleh, Smashbox is good? Um, and she's like, girl, I know like the eyeshadow pa palettes are disappointing, but trust me. She's like, I have tried so many different powder foundations, loose powders, and this is my favorite. So I trusted her and I'm so glad I did. Um, I've been wearing this the last couple of days, so I haven't been wearing it that long, just a few days, but I love it. Um, it is amazing. So a couple things about this foundation before I apply it. I am going to apply it on. I have my makeup on, but I don't have any foundation on. Um, this retails for $49 in the full size. Uh, you can buy a trial size that they sell for $22, but I think it's in limited shades. So I don't think they have the full range in the $22 size, but um, that's kind of neat if you want to try it or if you travel and you want something smaller, that's really cool. Um, so basically it comes in a little container like this. The packaging is just not anything super fancy, but it's very, you know, slick and chic. Um, and then it has the, the top just pops off like this. So um, when I first got this, I was trying to do what I normally do with loose powders, and I was just putting the lid on it and tapping it over to try and get it to fall out and I was noticing it wasn't really getting um, the foundation out and then I remember when she demonstrated this for me you actually have to turn let me see if I can do it you, have to, you actually have to turn it and then it comes out like that okay so that's quite enough right there I don't want to tip it over and make a mess but as you can see like one turn is gives you a good amount of uh, product so I would start with that. I have applied this with two different brushes and I think I found my brush of choice. So first I applied it with a Tarte huge buffer brush um, just because I thought, you know, this has a lot of coverage. It'll work really, a lot of coverage meaning that a lot of coverage of the face. Um, but I was not a fan of the application with this. Um, I picked up a similar brush but just smaller. It's the, it's the MAC 109 brush. So you can see that they're, you know, kind of the same idea. It's just that this is on a much smaller scale um, but they're both very dense they have like a rounded edge and they're just really uh, great buffer brushes this just is gonna take a little bit longer but I think this is the way to go and when she applied this on me she used a brush similar in size and I loved it so that's my two cents um, but basically what you want to do is you want to pick up the product on your brush and she explained that you really want to like break up that pigment um, 
So she just kind of said to just really work that pigment into the brush. And then of course you want to tap off any excess that you have back into the container. Um, and then just buff it onto the skin. Now, what I have primed my skin with is um, the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I'm not a huge fan of this primer, so I'm gonna say that right now, um, but I wanna go through it all because I bought it, so yeah, I grabbed it. It's a nourishing primer, so it is more of a moisturizing primer. It's not like a primer that uh, you know blurs pores or smooths out the skin. But what I like about this foundation, this powder foundation versus like Studio Fix is it definitely looks more natural on the skin. Um, it doesn't have the same coverage. It is buildable though. So if you like more coverage, you can certainly get it by just building it up. But it doesn't look like, it doesn't look so dry and so matte, um, which some of the pressed powder foundations do. So I like that. I wanted something that just looked like my skin, but just better. You know what I'm saying? I do find that if you spray your brush with a little Fix Plus, it's going to have a little bit of a prettier application. Um, it's not gonna, you're not gonna have so much product kind of fall off your brush. If your skin's really dry, that's the one thing about powder product. You wanna make sure that your skin is primed or moisturized or your brush is sprayed with some type of setting spray because if you just apply it on like bone dry skin, it's just not gonna stick and it's just gonna kind of, you know, evaporates not the right word but i'm going to use that word because it kind of explains what i'm talking about it's just basically going to like go into the air it's not going to stick to your skin so you want to make sure that you don't apply powder foundation on dry skin and my skin actually was a teeny bit dry because i applied that primer quite some time ago okay so i'm building this up to get more coverage Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like that. You can still see my skin coming through. I do have a little bit of freckles on the skin, in the center of my face, which you can still see, but um, this is gonna give me the coverage that I want so far, for now. Okay, so I just like the way that looks. It just looks very natural. It doesn't look really heavy. It was super easy and quick to apply. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of this foundation. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through, but I'm gonna apply my bronzer and blush and lips just so you can kind of see the full look. Um, but we're just gonna speed through this. look with the Smashbox Halo Perfecting Hydra. So this is the full look with the Smashbox Hydrating Perfecting Powder. Is that what it's called? Halo Hydrating Powder is what it is. Um, this is a really great powder, loose powder foundation. If, that, if you're on the hunt for a loose powder foundation, I definitely recommend it picking up the Smashbox one. It's pretty awesome. Um, a couple of things I will note though is you want to make sure again that you prep or prime your skin. You don't want to apply it on bone dry skin, otherwise it's not going to stick. And also when you put your blush or bronzer on, it's not going to stick either. So you want to make sure that the skin is primed really well. Um, what else? What else? What else? Brushes. For me, I find that I like a smaller dense brush versus like a big fat fluffy brush. Um, it just is going to give you a little bit better of a finish than this one will. It'll give you more coverage too because you're able to concentrate and focus on areas a little bit more precisely than you are with a big brush like this. If you're using this on top of a liquid foundation, which you can do, um, I would recommend going with a bigger fluffier brush because it's going to give a more sheer application so therefore you're not um, you don't have this heavy look of applying a foundation on top of a foundation, which is really what you're doing, but that's okay. If you like that much coverage, go for it, right? Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got to say about this, this foundation. If you do use this foundation and love it, let me know. If you pick this up and try it, let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!